The Soul Reaver is a legendary blade in the Legacy of Kane series, with a distinctive flamberge shape. Appearing in every game in the series, as well as all the comics, the blade has a long and complicated history in the series, and that deserves a long and complicated video to explore and illuminate the many facets of the fabled soul devouring blade. This will be a long video covering many aspects of the blade, so feel free to use the chapter headings below to skip to appropriate sections. First off, we need to establish that there is only one Soul Reaver sword in existence in Nosgoth, and the way timelines are explained to work precludes the possibility of Reavers entering from other timelines or multiverses. There is always only one Reaver in existence that, due to time travel, loops around and meets past and future versions of itself several times. We also have to understand that the blade has three distinct phases to its existence. Reaver, Soul Reaver, and Wraithblade. Just to complicate matters, the latter versions can be referred to as the Soul Reaver, and all can be abbreviated as the Reaver, a fact which is occasionally used to obscure plot developments. The Reaver, also known by fans as the Blood Reaver to help distinguish it, is the original version of the blade created by Vorador. It is intended to be used by the Vampire Champion, and is enchanted by Yanis Audrin and the other vampires with magic to help combat the Hilden Champion. It's said to be a vampiric blade, and drains the blood of its enemies. We see the Reaver version of the blade in the final time period of Soul Reaver 2, and Kane is using it through his chapters of Defiance. The Soul Reaver is the next version of the blade, created when the Reaver encounters and absorbs soul-devouring Wraith Raziel. With Raziel trapped in the corporeal shell of the Reaver blade, the weapon gains his hunger for souls, and the paradoxical nature of this mechanic, combined with time travel, creates the possibility for history and timelines to be changed. The Soul Reaver version of the blade is the only one seen in Blood Omen and Blood Omen 2 and it makes appearances at the start of Soul Reaver 1, throughout Soul Reaver 2, and at the very end of Defiance. The Wraithblade is the last version of the Soul Reaver, created when Kane attempted to strike Wraith Raziel with the blade. The ensuing paradox of the soul within the blade attempting to consume its own past version shattered the blade, and freed the entity within, but left it trapped in the shape of the physical blade. This version has much of the attributes of the former weapon, but is now an immaterial phantom weapon native to the Spectral Realm. The Wraithblade version of the blade is seen from partway through Legacy of Cain's Soul Reaver, and appears as Raziel's symbiotic weapon, and is virtually ever present through his appearances in Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver 2, and Defiance. The history of the blade is inextricably linked to the soul-devouring Wraith Raziel. Partially, this is due to Raziel's possession of the Wraithblade and frequent encounters with the other versions of the sword, but mainly it's due to his ultimate destiny to become trapped in the blade, becoming the entity responsible for its soul-devouring properties. Both the Soul Reaver and Wraithblade versions of the blade contain a trapped version of Raziel, with the latter essentially comprising of Raziel himself. The Soul Reaver first appeared in Blood Omen Legacy of Cain, released in 1996. In terms of lore, the blade was found by Cain, hidden in one of the alternate heaven-styled areas of Avenus Cathedral, with even Avenus matriarch Dimension Guardian Azimuth unaware of its presence, suggesting it had been placed there by another party. Kane remarked when he picked it up about its power, its legendary status, and its ability to consume the souls of its enemies. But much of the lore surrounding the blade was left unexplained and vague. Kane initially used the blade, along with the Wraith armor, to kill Azimuth, 
as part of his quest to kill the corrupted guardians and restore their respective pillars. Some time later, while investigating the machinations of Time Guardian Mobius, Kane became embroiled in the conflict between the Kingdom of Willendorf and the legions of the Nemesis, and found himself sent back in time to before the young boy king William the Just could become the tyrant of the Nemesis, with Mobius apparently having delivered some weapons to the young king. After Mobius left, Cain confronted William and found that both were armed with the Soul Weaver. The temporal mechanics of the situation would not be explained until Soul Reaver 2 a few years later, but the upshot of the presence of two Soul Reavers was that Cain was able to change history and kill William, giving birth to a new timeline where William never became the nemesis and instead died a martyred saint for a renewed vampire purge. The Soul Reaver returned in Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver and its role in the plot was expanded, becoming much more than an optional weapon but a vital part of the story and gameplay. Soul Reaver also introduced a new version of the weapon the Wraithblade. The physical Soul Reaver could be seen in the opening cinematic in the hands of Kane as his trademark weapon, with the blade partially serving to inspire fear among his subjects. When Raziel returned as a Wraith, Kane awaited him with the blade at the pillars, and at the climax of their battle, he drew the Soul Reaver against Raziel and struck him down with it. But instead of harming Raziel, the physical blade shattered, with Cain seemingly pleased and expecting this result. Freed from its physical constraints, it manifested as a wraith blade. This new weapon bound itself to Raziel, becoming his symbiotic weapon, which Raziel would use for the rest of the game and through the next two sequels. Notably, the blade could be imbued with other elements and allowed Raziel to open the sealed doors to the Silence Cathedral and the Sanctuary of the Clans. The Soul Reaver became even more integral to Soul Reaver 2, with even more plot implications. The Wraithblade served as Raziel's main weapon throughout, and the time travelling story meant that there were frequent appearances from the physical Soul Reaver with the interaction between the blades particularly key to the story. The game also ultimately revealed the existence of a third, original Reaver Blade, which drained blood rather than souls. At the start of the game, Raziel met Mobius, who showed that his staff could temporarily disable the Wraith Blade. And soon after, Raziel would discover the Soul Reaver used by William in Blood Omen, broken on his sarcophagus in the chapel of the Seraphat Stronghold and there he experienced an unusual sense of distortion and vertigo when approaching it. The blade was repaired by the Wraith Blade leeching Raziel's soul to restore it, and for the first time allowing Raziel to understand the will of the trapped entity. Throughout his journey, Raziel would be able to upgrade the Wraith Blade with elemental reaver enhancements, dark, light, air and fire at several ruined forge locations through the map. We'll go into details with those a little later. Raziel's second encounter with the physical Soul Reaver occurred when he returned to the Seraphan Stronghold, and Cain described the nature of time travel, history, and destiny to him, elaborating that time in Nosgoth was immutable and history unchangeable, apart from situations where the Reaver was involved. These presented a loophole as two versions of the Soul Reaver meeting could cause a paradox which would be able to change history. Explaining the distortions Raziel's felt around the Soul Reaver. Thanks to Cain's persuasion, at the historical juncture where Cain was supposed to die, Raziel spared him during a paradox event, changing history in the process. Later in the story, after learning the history of the vampires, Raziel travelled to Nosgoth's early history and the time of the Seraphan, and met legendary ancient vampire Janus Audrey, who recognised Raziel as a prophetic champion. Janus revealed that he'd been charged to guard the original vampiric Reaver Blade, 
and presented it to Raziel as his destined weapon. Simultaneously drawn to the blade, but also repelled by it and a dreaded emptiness he felt around it, Raziel refused the weapon and the Seraphan burst in. The Seraphan were able to kill Janos and steal the blade before Raziel was able to resist, and he gave pursuit, following the Seraphan back to their stronghold. Within the stronghold, Raziel found the Reaver blade conveniently laid across his path, but a confrontation with Malik and Mobius using his staff to disable the Wraith blade caused Raziel to abandon his misgivings and pick up the Reaver as a weapon in the spur of the moment. The blade instantly healed his wounds, making him virtually invincible, but had bound to him in such a way that he could not put it down. When all foes were exhausted, and presumably Mobius retreated with his staff, the Wraith Blade was finally able to manifest again, and it turned the physical blade on Raziel, who began to be drawn inside. It was only then that Raziel realised the truth, that the Soul Reaver was not forged to steal souls. The soul-devouring entity within was, and always had been, Raziel himself. At the last moment, Cain appeared, and using some careful timing, he exploited a small window of opportunity to take advantage of a brief Soul Reaver paradox as Raziel was taken into the blade. By pulling the physical blade away, Cain prevented Raziel from being pulled into the Reaver and changed history again. But the presence of the Wraith Blade in the Spectral Realm confirmed that he had only postponed Raziel's destiny. Blood Omen 2 took a simpler approach to the Soul Reaver. Set in the post Blood Omen era in the latest timeline, after Raziel and Kane's history defying changes, the story featured only the physical Soul Reaver Blade. The blade was once again treated similarly to a regular weapon and was absent for most of the game, but its absence and regaining it was an important motivation for Kane. The game initially showed Kane recalling walking away from the collapsing pillars of Nosgoth with the Soul Reaver blade, and like the opening of Soul Reaver, Kane appeared to use it as his trademark weapon in his initial attempts at conquering Nosgoth with his vampire army. But his path to conquest was stopped by the revived Seraphan Order, and the mysterious Seraphan Lord, who was in possession of the Nexus Stone, an item which could nullify the power of the Soul Reaver. In a climactic battle outside the city of Meridian, the two armies clashed, with Cain and the Seraphan Lord locked in single combat. With Cain unable to use the power of the Soul Reaver, the Seraphan Lord was victorious and knocked Cain off a cliff to his apparent death. The Soul Reaver was then taken by the Seraphan Lord. The Seraphan Lord retained ownership of the blade for the next few centuries, until Cain was revived, and regaining the blade was one of Cain's main motivations. Through the story, Cain had to rely on other more fragile weapons, and only a few occasions was the Soul Reaver actually seen in the hands of the Seraphan Lord. Partway through the story, Cain was alerted to the presence and usage of the Nexus Stone, and recovered the stone for himself. At the end of the game, Cain travelled to the Hilden city, and ultimately battled the Seraphan Lord above the Hilden Gate. Cain used the Nexus Stone to close the gate instead of protecting his own life, and a distraction from Yanis Ordrin allowed Cain to regain the Soul Reaver, which Cain then used against the Seraphan Lord, and came out victorious. Cain then left with the Soul Reaver to plan the rise of his empire. Legacy of Cain Defiance continued on from Soul Reaver 2 as a more direct sequel and showed that Cain had retrieved the Reaver in the aftermath of Soul Reaver 2, meaning that both he and Raziel used a version of the blade as their only weapon, with Raziel reading the Wraith Blade and Cain the ordinary Blood Reaver. Like in Soul Reaver 2, a series of elemental enhancements for each Reaver were available for the two protagonists to imbue the Reaver, both of which had their own special abilities and skills, with most gained through specific forges, but we'll talk about those later in the video. In terms of the plot, the Reavers were again central to the storyline, 
although the complexity of their interaction were much simpler than previously. Raziel's knowledge of his destiny to be consumed by the Reaver caused him to seek out its reasoning, and his discovery that Vorador was the being that originally forged the blade caused him to seek out the Elder Vampire. But Vorador could not accept responsibility for his actions, claiming instead that Yanis Ordrin and his associates had placed enchantments on the blade shortly after its creation. And so Raziel was once again seeking a way to meet Yanis Ordrin. Both Raziel and Kane would discover prophetic murals on their respective journeys, each featuring messianic heroes, with the vampire champion armed with the reaver, and the Hilden champion armed with a fiery sword. Ultimately, it was revealed that Raziel was both of these champions, and Kane's role as scion of balance was something different. But the interpretations of the prophecies was the cause of conflict between the two. And when Raziel travelled to Avernus, seeking the Heart of Darkness, which was inside Cain, conflict between the two was assured. They met in Avernus Cathedral, both armed with their respective versions of the Reaver, and both apparently bearing the only weapon that could finish the other. The battle ended with Raziel almost taken into the Reaver again, and him ripping out Cain's heart with his bare claws in desperation. In the final levels of defiance, Raziel would use a key provided by the revived Janos to open his way to the final Wraithblade enhancement, the Spirit Reaver. Taking in the souls of the previous Balance Guardians, represented by the restored Ariel, Raziel was able to purify the blade with spirit, but was unable to prevent the Hilden Lord continuing the Hilden plans. But Cain wasn't dead and he returned with the Reaver to find the Spirit Forge open and a resurrected Mobius speaking with an invisible Elder God. After Cain dispatched Mobius, Raziel did the same in the Spectral Realm and found that the Spirit Reaver purified Mobius' sight, allowing him to see the Elder God for the first time. Seeing the murals of the Scion of Balance, a vampire figure resembling Cain armed with a glowing reaver blade, Raziel returned to the material realm and sacrificed himself to imprisonment in the blade, finally creating the soul reaver, while at the same time freeing himself by dispersing the spirit reaver wraith blade into Cain to heal his injuries, purify him of the corruption that had plagued him since birth, and allow him to see the true enemy, the Elder God. After defeating the Elder God with the newly created Soul Reaver, Cain left to ponder his next move, and the hope that Raziel had given him. In Blood Omen, the Soul Reaver was treated as a regular weapon. It was gained about halfway through, and was one of the most powerful weapons in the game. The Reaver was a two-handed weapon, meaning that while using it, Cain was unable to cast spells or use items. However, the blade was able to deal massive damage, killing most non-boss enemies with a single hit that scattered their remains in an explosive fashion, along with a distinctive screaming sound effect. There was a catch, however, as the blade needed magic to function. Each strike would drain Cain's magic energy, and without magic, the blade would be no more powerful than the standard iron sword. This requirement was dropped from later titles. The Wraithblade in Soul Reaver 1 was a powerful weapon that could quickly dispatch enemies, and had an inbuilt charging finishing move. It could be used to open sealed doors or barriers marked with the Reaver symbol. The blade was ever present in the Spectral Realm, but could only manifest when Raziel's health was full. Once manifested, it would stop the usual drain of the Material Realm, but any kind of damage Raziel took would dispel the blade. Once Raziel had gained the ability to fire telekinetic force projectiles, the Wraithblade was similarly enhanced, allowing Raziel to fire special Reaver bolts. He could also optionally imbue the blade with fire if he discovered the secret fire forge, creating the Fire Reaver, a powerful enhancement which could ignite enemies with a single hit or with its projectiles. 
In Soul Reaver 2, the Wraith Blade started out much the same as it had finished Soul Reaver 1, with similar mechanics, including sustaining Raziel's material manifestation and only being able to appear in the material realm when his health was full. After Raziel's encounter with William's version of the Soul Reaver, the Wraith Blade was permanently changed, and in gameplay terms, this allowed Raziel to summon the blade at will, regardless of his health. But the Wraith Blade would then automatically consume the souls of his beaten enemies, preventing Raziel from feeding. The more the Wraith Blade struck enemies, the more powerful it became. And if over aroused, it would turn its hunger on Raziel and drain his health. This was indicated by a circular reaver bar around the outside of his health coil. Raziel's encounters with elemental forges each upgraded the reaver, allowing certain enhancements to be used. Many of these had specific applications or abilities which allowed progression through the story. Each imbuement was only temporary, but they could be re-imbued from special reaver fonts. Again, we'll cover the specifics of the reaver enhancements a little later. The reaver that was gained at the end of the story made Raziel virtually invincible through his final boss encounters against his former Seraphan comrades and his former human self. It also meant that Raziel was unable to put the blade down and could not shift to spectral. The blade did not appear to have any particular special abilities, and its power is unclear, but it could be seen to drain the blood of its enemies rather than devouring their souls. In Blood Omen 2, the Soul Reaver was only used in the final boss fight, but it is possible to access the Soul Reaver earlier through cheats or other methods such as the incomplete bonus mode, which allowed Kane to use the Soul Reaver and the Iron Armor through the game. When used in this fashion, the Soul Reaver is an incredibly powerful weapon, which is able to finish most non-boss enemies within three hits, and borrowed most of its moveset from the other sword-type weapons. The Soul Reaver is notably unbreakable, and cannot be dropped or put down. In Defiance, the Wraith Blade and the Reaver served respectively as Raziel and Kane's only weapons. Similarly to the previous Reaver bar used in Soul Reaver 2, Defiance featured a Reaver Charge bar, which was refilled by the player striking Reaver Charge stones, attacking enemies, performing complex combos or special attacks, and by the player choosing to feed the Reaver when defeating an enemy, to use their blood or souls to increase Reaver Charge, rather than to refill their own health. When the Reaver Charge meter was filled, Raziel or Kane could perform a series of charged attacks, which were unique to each Reaver enhancement, or they could expend the whole bar at once in a powerful Reaver spell, again with a unique usage for each enhancement, with many having puzzle as well as combat applications. Although we'll cover the enhancements later, two particular Reaver enhancements are worth mentioning here, as they stand out from the others. The Spirit Reaver, is the final enhancement gained by Raziel, and acts as something as an all-powerful superweapon. It requires all of the previous Reavers to gain, and overrides the Material Reaver, effectively taking its place. The weapon is incredibly powerful, and can kill most enemies in a few hits. The final Soul Reaver is represented by a yellow and blue glowing Reaver Blade, but its exact powers and applications are unclear, as it's only used in the final boss fight against the Elder God. This is where we'll get a little complicated. As you can probably see from the previous sections, the history of the Reaver, Soul Reaver and Wraithblade can be very complex. It's encountered out of sequence, involves several runs of time travel, and loops back to meet itself on several occasions. With such a complex history, gaps and inconsistencies may seem almost inevitable. Nevertheless, bearing in mind the way the time travel mechanics are handled, and the accompanying implication that there is only one Reaver that loops around to occupy all places where it's seen, a relatively straightforward history of the Reaver can be established with all materials taken into account. The following details the known history of the Soul Reaver in the most recent fourth timeline. Earlier timelines 
are much more straightforward and feature less complications. To help illustrate the known timeline of the Reva and its journey through Norse Gothic history, we've created a couple of diagrams which we'll attach in the comments. The Reva blade is created before Nosgoth's recorded history, at some point towards the end of, or sometime after, the Vampire Hilden Wars. The blade is crafted by the human swordsmith Vorador at the behest of his master Janus Audrin. Its design, and indeed its existence, are informed by the prophecies of the future and the role of the Vampire Champion. Soon after its forging, the blade is taken by Janus and he and the other leading vampires cast various enchantments on the blade. These make the blade vampiric and give it the ability to drain victims of blood. It's likely that at this stage it's also enchanted to help defeat and possibly outright imprison the Hilden champion. Janus's role as Reaver Guardian means that he will look after and guard the blade until the vampire champion comes to collect it. Through various tribulations Janus maintains his role, eventually retreating to a home in Nosgoth's northern mountains as the ancient vampires slowly die out. He waits alone, guarding the Reaver, for thousands of years. In Nosgoth's early history, the Seraphan begin a series of vampire hunting crusades and target Janus Audrin, but are unable to reach him. Seeking his guidance, the Wraith Raziel manages to reach Janus, who identifies him as the Vampire Champion and tries to give him the Reaver Blade. But Raziel is repelled by the blade and refuses to seize it. The Saraphan use the path that Raziel has blazed through to take advantage and reach Janus themselves. Janus teleports Raziel away to save him and battles the Saraphan himself. They manage to subdue him rip out his heart, and take the Reaver. Raziel follows the Saraphan back to their stronghold, and finds the Reaver laid across his path in one of the stronghold's antechambers. A brief confrontation with Mobius and Malik ensues, and Raziel's Wraithblade is disabled by Mobius's staff. With Raziel left with no choice of weapon, he picks up the Reaver. Mobius and Malik exit, and Raziel finds that the blade has bound to him, making him virtually invincible, but also meaning he cannot drop the blade or shift to spectral. Raziel kills six of the leading Seraphan commanders with the blade, including his former human self. After his killing spree, the Wraithblade is finally able to manifest again, and it uncouples from Raziel, turning the Reaver on Raziel and impales him. Raziel realises for the first time that his destiny is to become the soul-devouring entity trapped within the blade. At the last moment, Cain appears, and using some careful timing is able to trigger a Soul Weaver paradox, which alters history. Raziel is temporarily spared his imprisonment, but becomes lost in the spectral realm. Cain picks up the Reaver. Cain searches for Raziel for some time while armed with the Reaver. Continuing on his quest through Defiance, Cain is directed by Mobius to explore the Vampire Citadel, and is able to take advantage of several pillar-themed emblem fragments to add various powers to his Reaver attacks. Eventually, Cain is propelled into the future of the Blood Omen era, confronts Raziel where both are armed with their own versions of the blade, and loses being sent to the demon realm. He recovers and returns to the material realm and finds the open spirit forge at the vampire citadel, along with a revived Mobius. Cain kills Mobius, allowing Raziel to possess him, and Cain impales the rising corpse with the Reaver, only to find Raziel within. Raziel willingly sacrifices himself to the blade this time, becoming trapped within and finally, creating the Soul Reaver. For some time after this, the chronology of the blade is uncertain and not definitively known. However, background sources do provide several clues as to where its next appearances will be. Early designs for Defiance 
featured a scene with Kane travelling back in time to return the Reaver once he had finished with it. Initial reports suggested this was to go back to Avernus, but later clarifications suggested it was instead to go back to the Pillars for it to make its way to Mobius and to William. The next known appearance of the blade is in the pre blood Omen era, where the blade is in the hands of the William of Just, and may be implied to have recently been gifted to him by Mobius. A young Kane, armed with a future version of the blade, challenges William, and the two clash, igniting a Soul Weaver paradox. In later timelines, Kane is victorious, William is killed, and William's blade is broken. The broken blade is placed on William's sarcophagus. Some years later, Raziel visits William's tomb in the Seraphan stronghold while armed with the Wraithblade. The Wraithblade takes control and leeches his life force to mend the broken blade, making the Soul Weaver complete again. A short while later, Raziel returns to the stronghold and has an encounter with Cain, where Cain explains the history of Nosgoth and the temporal implications of the Soul Weaver and its associated paradoxes. With a temporal juncture created, Raziel is able to spare Cain, changing history. He leaves the Reaver behind and continues on his journey. The Blade once again enters a period of uncertainty, but its next known appearance is a few decades later in the Blood Omen era, where the Blade has been hidden by unknown parties in the heaven area of Avernus Cathedral, without the knowledge of the matriarch of the cathedral and dimension guardian, Azimuth. No information is available to suggest who placed it here, but many fans believe that Mobius would be a likely candidate. Kane goes on to hold the blade through Blood Omen 1, though his exact usage of the blade is somewhat up for debate, given the weapon system of the game. Part way through, he is sent back in time and discovers Mobius manipulating the boy king William the Just. Cain confronts William, and both are armed with the Soul Weaver. In the ensuing paradox event, William is killed, and his blade is broken. Cain, meanwhile, walks away with the complete Soul Weaver, and returns to the Blood Omen era to discover his actions have ignited a new timeline, with the tyrannical legions of the Nemesis replaced by an army of vampires. Kane apparently doesn't use the blade for the final scenes of Blood Omen 1, although his potentially faulty recollections from the start of Blood Omen 2 show him walking away from the collapsing pillars with the blade. Kane maintains ownership of the blade for several centuries into the post-Blood Omen era, as he collaborates with Vorador to form a vampire army bent on dominating Nosgoth. The army is opposed by a reformed Seraphan order led by the mysterious Seraphan Lord. Cain's path of conquest is stopped at a battle outside Meridian, where several events lead to the downfall of the vampire army. Cain fights the Seraphan Lord in single combat, but the Seraphan Lord's ownership of the Nexus Stone prevents Cain from using the power of the Soul Weaver. Cain is thrown off a cliff to his apparent demise, and the Seraphan Lord gains ownership of the blade. For the next few centuries, the Seraphan Lord keeps the blade and conquers Nosgoth under a tyrannical rule. When Cain is revived, he comes into possession of the Nexus Stone and eventually confronts the Seraphan Lord above the Hilton Gate. And Yanis Audrin's intervention allowed Cain to recover the Soul Weaver, and the Seraphan Lord is defeated. Cain will maintain ownership of the blade for over a thousand years into the Soul Weaver era. He raises lieutenants to serve him and executes his eldest lieutenant, Raziel, when he grows wings. Raziel is revived as a wraith centuries later and makes his way to the pillars to confront Cain, who is armed with the Soul Reaver. At the climax of the battle, Cain attempts to strike Raziel down, but the paradoxical implications shatter the blade instead. The Wraith Blade is freed and binds itself to Raziel, becoming his symbiotic weapon. Raziel holds the Wraithblade for the remainder of Soul Reaver 1, 
and is able to use the blade to open several sealed doors, notably those barring the entrance to the Silence Cathedral. He potentially gained a single fire enhancement for the blade before following Kane to the Chronoplast, but this was not carried over to the events of Sol Reaper 2. Raziel continues to hold the Wraith Blade through his time travelling excursions in Sol Reaper 2, where he imbues the blade with temporary enhancements for darkness, light, air, and fire, and makes several interesting discoveries, including the long forgotten ancient history of the Reaver as a prophetic weapon, and the time travelling implications of the two versions of the Sol Reaver in close proximity. On his journey, Raziel uses the Wraith Blade to repair William's broken Soul Reaver, uses his Soul Reaver paradox to spare Cain, travels back to Nosgoth early history but fails to defend Janos, and chases the Seraphan down to their stronghold after they murder Janos and steal the physical Reaver Blade. In the stronghold, the Wraith Blade is disabled by Mobius' staff in a confrontation with Mobius and Malik, forcing Raziel to pick up the physical Reaver Blade instead. When the Wraith Blade is able to manifest again, it turns the Reaver on Raziel, who finally realises his own destiny to become the soul devouring entity within the Soul Reaver. Raziel is impaled and begins to be absorbed into the Blade, but some clever timing from Cain prevents this and ignites a Soul Reaver paradox to change history. Raziel is lost to the Spectral Realm, but soon finds the Wraith Blade waiting for him there, his own future soul providing proof that he's only postponed his destiny. Raziel continues to hold the Wraith Blade through defiance, losing several centuries in the Spectral Realm and ending up in the Blood Omen era. Here he again uncovers long forgotten ancient secrets and imbues the Wraith Blade with more permanent enhancements for darkness, light, fire, air, water and earth. Ultimately, Raziel meets Vorador seeking the truth of his role in the creation of the Blade, but is directed once again to Janus Aldrin. He confronts Cain in Avernus Cathedral with Cain bearing the original Reaver Blade, and is victorious, ripping out the Heart of Darkness and sending Cain to the Demon Realm. Raziel goes on to revive Janus and gains entry to the Spirit Forge, where the spirits of the Balance Guardians, represented by Ariel, cleanse the Blade, rendering it pure by spirit. His actions, however, lead to the release of the Hildon and the possession of Janus, and Raziel is beaten and relegated again to the Spectral Realm. Cain, however, recovers and makes his way to the Spirit Forge as well. Raziel takes advantage of Cain's killing of Mobius to possess his corpse and intentionally sacrifices himself to the Reaver. This creates the Soul Reaver, simultaneously fulfilling both the ancient champion's prophecies and providing Cain with his destined weapon. Crucially, he also uses the purified spirit wreather Wraith Blade to cleanse Cain of his corruption, dispersing the blade into Cain to heal him and also free himself from an eternity of imprisonment. Thus, the history of the Reaver and Raziel himself is brought to an end. Throughout the series, it's been possible to upgrade the Reaver or the Wraith Blade with various elemental enhancements. Each game in the Soul Reaver arc of the series, for example, was planned to include several Reaver enhancements or elemental Reavers to augment the basic Wraith Blade or Reaver Blade that were intended to be gained through the course of the story. None of the games managed to complete these lists fully, and the story of these enhancements is filled with cut content unfinished and recycled concepts, and in many cases, aspects that were cut would reappear in later games. Here's a rundown of all the known Reavers. The first game in the Soul Reaver arc of the series is the one with the most deleted Reaver enhancements. Besides the basic material and spectral versions of the Wraith Blade used by Raziel and its predecessor the Soul Reaver, only one Reaver enhancement the Fire Reaver made it into the finished game. It could be imbued from a secret fire forge hidden behind a stained glass window beneath the Drowned Abbey, and once gained, it could be re-imbued by passing it through flames. Both the charged finishing move 
and projectiles from the blade could ignite enemies, causing fatal damage. However, this wasn't the only Reaver enhancement planned for the title. An initial concept mentioned in pre-release materials and interviews had Raziel gaining no less than seven separate Reaver enhancements in the game. Six were elemental enhancements related to the environment and companions to the glyph spells, while the last was an all-powerful, all-encompassing enhancement that overrode the previous Reavers. The Sunlight Reaver was a bright yellow blade that could stun by blinding enemies. It was intended to be gained from a forge hidden beneath the tomb of the Seraphat and could be re-imbued by passing it through shafts of sunlight. The Sunlight Reaver in its forge can be found in the alpha versions of the game, but it was completely removed from the final game and its place taken by the Aerial Reaver in the behind the scenes listings. An entry for the Sunlight Reaver in the debug menus of the retail game is actually an incorrectly attributed Stone Reaver. The Water Reaver was a pale blue elemental enhancement that could burn enemies with water and could be re-imbued from fountains and waterfalls. It was originally intended to be gained from a forge beneath the Drowned Abbey, with the Fire Forge taking its place in the final game. The Water Forge and Water Reaver can be found in its original position in the Alphas, although its colours seems to have been mixed up. In the final version of the game, the Water Reaver can be found in the code and debug menus, although missing its special properties. The Stone Reaver was a white blade that was able to petrify and shatter enemies, and could presumably be re-imbued by striking boulders and rocks. Its forge was found in the Alphas, in the courtyard behind the Dumahim Ash Village, but a copy of the forge was positioned nearby, in the valley leading up to the Oracle's cave. In the final version, the Stone Reaver appears to be completely missing, but it's actually present. It's incorrectly attributed in the debug menus as the Sunlight Reaver. As previously mentioned, the Fire Reaver was the only elemental reaver to make the final game, with the power to burn enemies and be re-imbued from the fire. Despite being found beneath the Drowned Abbey in retail, the Alphas showed it was originally meant to be found off the Drawbridge Tower in Raziel's territory. The Sound Reaver was a pink blade, able to shatter enemies and be re-imbued from bells. Its forge could be found in the upper reaches of the silenced cathedral in the Alphas, although the forge itself was notably incomplete and simply consisted of an untextured copy of the Sunlight Forge. In the final version of the game, the Soundweaver can be found in the code and debug menus, missing its special properties. The last elemental reaver type was the Spirit Reaver, which was brilliant green, able to completely destroy enemies and was re-imbued from enemies' souls. The Alphas showed the Spirit Forge to be placed in the upper levels of the Human Citadel, but the Reaver and its Forge were completely removed from the final game, and its place taken by the Cane Reaver in the behind-the-scenes listing. Three further interconnected story-based Reavers existed at various times in the course of development. The original plans called for an all-encompassing, amplified Reaver to replace the other Reavers near the end of the story by taking in the souls of notable characters Ariel and Kane. The amplified Reaver is mentioned in pre-release materials and appears in the ability list in the Alphas rather than in the Reavers list. The amplified Reaver ability notably does not appear to function in the Alphas and no additional blade or blade effect is seen. Comments by developer Daniel Kabuko suggested it was originally planned to have been a red and black blade. After the Alphas, much of the famous cut content was removed, including the Elemental Reavers, and the Amplified Reaver was also removed as an ability, but it was decided that a series of Chronoplast Visions would be added to hint at the previous materials and provide a hook to entice players going forward. Watch our Chronoplast Visions video for a more detailed explanation of those. As such, a pair of Reavers were adapted from the existing Elemental Reavers to approximate the planned appearance of the Amplified Reaver. The so-called Cane Reaver was the first stand-in created. It was adapted from the Spirit Reaver and was coloured red and black. It originally appeared in two Chronoplast Visions, 
one showing it to be gained from Ariel's death and sacrifice to the Wraithblade, and another vision showed Raziel holding it in a scene after Cain's death as he overlooked Nosgoth from the pinnacle of the Silence Cathedral. This version of the visions can be seen in some of the earlier beta versions of the game, and the Cain Reaver appears in the pinnacle vision even into the retail game. Later on, the decision was made that the red and black did not suit the supposed purity of Ariel, so another blade was created, the so-called Ariel Reaver. It was adapted from the Sunlight Reaver and kept its colour scheme, and could be seen in Ariel's vision into the retail game. Both the Ariel and Kane Reavers appear in the final debug menu listings, taking the place of the Sunlight and Spirit Reavers respectively. Soul Reaver 1 also notably started the tradition of sealed doorways or barriers which were marked with Reaver symbols and could only be opened with the Wraithblade. Only a few were seen in the game, but later titles would carry this concept further, with each specific enhancement only able to open certain symbol marked doors. Like its predecessor, Soul Reaver 2 also had a large list of Reaver enhancements planned which were based on more traditional elements, and could be temporarily imbued with each element by passing the blade through a special Reaver font. This time, Soul Reaver 2 included four Reaver enhancements, aside from the basic spectral and material variants, which were necessary to gain as part of the story. These were... The Dark Reaver, which was a purple blade gained from the Dark Forge in the Swamp in the first time period. It could open dark sealed doors, activate shadow bridges, and blind sentry eyes. The Light Reaver was a bright yellow blade gained from the Light Forge in the Southern Lake in the first time period. Its projectiles could power light crystals to activate a variety of mechanisms, and another usage was the engraved stone mechanism which could project images. Additionally, this blade could be used to light up darkened areas and opened light sealed doors. The Air Reaver was a wispy white blade, gained from the Air Forge in the canyons nearby Janus Aldrin's retreat in the second time period. This Reaver could open sealed doors, activate air plinths to provide updrafts to glide on, and could smash open cracked barriers or objects. An additional usage of the Air Reaver was that it allowed Raziel to move through the water of the swamp without wading. Lastly, the Orange Fire Reaver was gained from the Fire Forge inside Janus Audrin's retreat in the third time period. This blade could be used to open fire sealed doors and activate fire plinths, which was notably used to melt ice. It could also be used to lighten darkened areas, just like the Light Reaver. Each of these enhancements was initially reported to have four to six interactions it could perform but many of these appeared to have been discarded during development, although Defiance would re-establish most of the lost abilities. Like its predecessor, the Reaver list was not fully realised, and three additional Reavers were planned that never made it into the game. These were the Water Reaver, Earth Reaver, and Spirit Reavers, and their symbols can be seen on the Pillars platform in the subterranean ruins. Each of these were intended to be gained in similarly complex Reaver Forges based on ancient temples, and would have had their own special abilities, presumably including their own sealed doors. However, the enhancements were discarded early in the design process, with only basic work done on early designs for each forge. Only the Spirit Forge exists in some fashion in the retail game, with its ruins visible beneath the southern lake. However, some of the deleted Reavers can be found in game files and activated through debug menus, but these are merely placeholders, with unfinished designs and no abilities. One ability that is known for the deleted Reavers is a hookshot-like ability for the Spirit Reaver, which would have allowed Raziel to teleport to distant locations, but the in-game placeholder for the Earth Reaver also allows Raziel to sink in flooded areas and walk on the bottom. Several Reaver augmentations were also additionally intended to be included in the game, one for each Reaver enhancement, that once gained would have bestowed an additional charge-up move 
with known examples being the Fire Reaver augmentation summoning a ring of fire, the Light Reaver augmentation blinding enemies and illuminating dark areas, and the Dark Reaver augmentation making Raziel invisible. None of these made it into the game, and it's unclear how they were meant to be gained, although it's possible to trigger the invisibility effect through cheats and codes. Again, some of these abilities seem to be salvaged and reused by Defiance. Legacy of Kane Defiance finally filled in the Reaver list from previous games, but also left some new spaces of its own. For the first time, Severn Reaver enhancements were available for Raziel, aside from the basic spectral and material variants. Each had a number of distinct abilities, moves, charged attacks and Reaver spells, which appeared to be the fulfilment of Soul Reaver 2's missing abilities and augmentations, with only the Spirit Reaver's hookshot unaccounted for. Enhancements were now permanent and could be selected at will. This was planned to be explained with a scene featuring the Elder God destroying the Reaver fonts, necessitating the gaining of more permanent upgrades, but the scene was cut. The upgrades for the Wraithblade included the following, which were gained by Raziel. The Dark Reaver was gained from a sealed forge inside the Vampire Citadel, which was accessed from ruins in the cemetery. The Dark Reaver could once again be used to open doors sealed with darkness, and could also be used to dim or darken light orbs. Its charged attacks spawned homing mini-shades, and its Reaver spell allowed Raziel to become invisible, which could be used to bypass Watcher Guardian Gargoyles. The Light Reaver was gained from a sealed forge inside the Vampire Citadel, which was accessed from different ruins inside the cemetery. The Light Reaver could once again be used to open light sealed doors. It could also be used to imbue dark orbs with light, and was particularly effective against darkness associated enemies like Shades. The charged and Reaver spell attacks of the Light Reaver both gave blinding stunning effects, with a longer duration affecting multiple enemies for the Reaver spell. The elemental Reaver enhancements Raziel gained from here were each imbued by the Wraithblade taking in the souls of two of the original Pillar Guardians to create the associated element. Changing the order established in Soul Reaver 2, the Fire Reaver was the next to be gained, and was imbued from a sealed forge inside the Vampire Citadel which was accessed from a ledge nearby the Pillars, and was imbued from the souls of the Conflict and Nature Guardians. The Fire Reaver could once again be used to open fire sealed doors. It could also be used to ignite braziers. The charged attacks set enemies on fire, and the reaver spell set off a fiery explosion which could also set enemies aflame. One drawback, however, was that enemies which were burned to ash could not be fed from. The air reaver was gained from a sealed forge inside the vampire citadel, which was accessed from a ledge nearby the pillars and was imbued from the souls of the Mind and Dimension Guardians. The Air Reaver could once again be used to open air sealed doors and activate air plinths to provide updrafts to glide upon. Charged attacks of the Air Reavers spun and threw enemies, while the Reaver spell spawned whirlwinds which blew enemies away. The Water Reaver was gained from a sealed forge inside the Vampire Citadel, which was accessed from the fountain inside Vorador's mansion and was imbued from the souls of the States and Death Guardians. The Water Reaver could open water sealed doors and could additionally douse flames, as well as freeze waterfalls to create climbable surfaces. The charged attack froze enemies briefly, while the Reaver spell blasted ice to freeze surrounding enemies in place. The Earth Reaver was gained from a sealed forge inside the Vampire Citadel, which was accessed from a chamber beneath Advan's Cathedral, and was imbued from the souls of the Time and Energy Guardians. The Earth Reaver could open earth sealed doors, could create floating platforms from special earth plinths, and could allow Raziel to sink and walk on the bottom of flooded areas. The charged attack of the Earth Reaver reflected damage onto nearby enemies, while its Reaver spell caused the localised earthquake. The last enhancement gained by Raziel was the Spirit Reaver, which would gain from the heart of the Vampire Citadel. It was imbued from the souls of the previous Balance Guardians, represented by Eren. It had no major applications, but both its charged attacks 
and Reaver spells caused major damage. The enhancement effectively replaced Raziel's ordinary material Reaver, and as a late game all powerful, all encompassing weapon, it served as something of a successor to the amplified Reaver concept from Solvian 1. Aside from the Reaver enhancements gained by Raziel, Kane also had his own enhancements, which were intended for the use of the Scion of Balance. Each of these was gained by Kane finding a particular fragment of the Balance Emblem. Although not made particularly clear in the game, these fragments were related to the Pillars of Nosgoth, and each represented a particular pillar. They were also labelled behind the scenes using names of different attributes or races – Blood, Human, Hilden, Vampire and God. But these were for technical reasons, to identify colour, location or enemy guardians, rather than bearing any particular plot implications. The first enhancement gained by Cain was the hub or balance fragment of the balance emblem, which could be found in the chapel of the Seraphine stronghold. This gifted Cain the balance reaver enhancement, which could dispel blessed barriers and had enhanced damage on charged and reaver spell attacks. It's named after blood, for technical reasons. The flame reaver had a variety of pyrokinetic applications, including enhancing telekinesis which allowed Cain to ignite braziers and sconces. The Flame Reaver could also open doors sealed with the Flame Fragment, and its charged attacks cause enemies extra fire damage. Notably, the Reaver spell of the Flame Enhancement caused enemies to attack each other in a similar manner to the Inspire Hate spell from Blood Omen 1. Although obscured somewhat in the final game, the Flame Fragment is aligned with the Conflict Pillar and is labelled as such in menus. It's also named Human, for technical reasons. The Dimension Enhancement was gained from the Dimension Fragment of the Emblem, which was discovered in a statue nearby the Pillars of Nosgoth. The Dimension Enhancement allowed Cain to activate Dimension Fragment sealed doors and other machinery. Its charged attacks mirrored damage onto nearby enemies, and its Reaver spell quickly teleported Cain around striking enemies. It's also named Hilden, for technical reasons. The Lightning Enhancement based on the energy pillar, was gained from the lightning fragment of the balance emblem which was discovered in the water forge within the vampire citadel. The lightning enhancement allowed Cain to open lightning sealed doors. Its charged attacks chained lightning to nearby opponents, and its reaver spell caused opponents to be struck by lightning. The lightning reaver was aligned with the energy pillar and is labelled as such in menus. It's also named vampire for technical reasons. The Time Enhancement was gained from the Time Fragment of the Balance Emblem, which was found in the Light Forge of the Vampire Citadel. The Time Reaver allowed Cain to open Time Seals, while its charged attacks slowed the movement of struck enemies, and its Reaver spell briefly slowed time for a short period, in a manner similar to the Blood Omen spell Slow Time. The Time Enhancement is also named as God, for technical reasons. Finally, the Soul Reaver is effectively counted as the last enhancement of Cain's Reavers in the inventory. Here, the Soul Reaver is separated from the others and represented by the same skull design as the Balance Emblem itself, only glowing blue and yellow. The blade cannot be deselected, and the exact powers of the weapon in this game are unknown, as Cain only uses it in his boss battle against the Elder God. Like its predecessors, Defiance also had a number of Reavers removed but these cuts happened at a much earlier stage than its predecessors, and no vestiges remain in the final game, potentially indicating that they were cut at the concept phase or never implemented. With Kane's Reavers in the release version based on the five pillars of Nosgoth, the remaining four would be based on the missing pillars – Mind, Nature, States and Death. No details on these enhancements are currently known. In Soul Reaver 2, an interesting pattern could be seen on the Pillars platform in the subterranean Pillars Chamber, comprising of all the known pillars and elemental symbols seen in the series, including a few which hadn't appeared at the time. The meaning of the pattern was speculated and debated by fans after the release of the game, but it was the release of Defiance that finally explained the pattern and the relationship between the various principles in Nosgoth and the implications for the Reaver enhancements. 
The diagram described how the principles of the pillars were aligned with elements, with conflict and nature aligned with fire, death and states with water, energy and time with earth, and mind and dimension with air. And encompassing these, the fire and air elements were associated with light, and the water and earth elements were associated with darkness. The combination of the six elements created the central spirit element, which fed back to the balance pillar. The design was seen again in Defiance on the door to Yanis' crypt in Borodor's mansion, and through the Defiance story, the process was fulfilled, with Raziel gaining the dark and light reavers, and then absorbing the souls of the original Conflict in Nature Guardians to imbue the Fire Reaver, the Mind and Dimension Guardians to imbue the Air Reaver, the Death and States Guardians to create the Water Reaver, and finally the Energy and Time Guardians to imbue the Earth Reaver. Only with the combination of the previous six elements could he fully unlock the Spirit Forge, which called the souls of the former Balance Guardians, represented by Ariel, to imbue the Purifying Spirit Reaver. This was then used to purify Balance Guardian and Scion of Balance, Cain, curing him of the corruption that had plagued him since birth. Although retaining the same basic appearance, the Reaver does go through some subtle design changes through the games, and some features, such as the overall size, physical imperfections, and the number and direction of waves, vary throughout. In Blood Omen, the Reaver appeared to be much smoother than later designs, with a single set of curved horns, a smaller skull with no fangs, and a hilt composed of large parallel ribs. The colour of the blade also varied here. It appeared white in the icon window, grey in the game, and was black in the status screen. Soul Reaver redesigned the blade to the more familiar shape we know today, which first appeared in the Glyphex opening cutscene. The skull was made more realistic and enlarged with bigger eye sockets and fangs added. The side horns were similarly enlarged and given a more angular look with a second pair added, and the grip of the hilt was made sleeker and longer with an angled pattern added, giving the impression of wrapped leather or a similar material with a small angled pommel at the end. This version of the blade was the basis of all that came after, but the in-game version was slightly different with a much darker appearance calling in more grey and black tones, less emphasis on the grips, a larger pommel and a sharper, more jagged blade shape. With the upgraded technology of the next generation of consoles, the Soul Reaver design seen in Soul Reaver 2, Blood Omen 2 and Defiance much more closely matched the design established in the Soul Reaver opening cutscene, although slight variations in blade colour were seen, with Soul Reaver 2 adding green tones, Blood Omen 2 adding whiter tones, and Defiance preferring grey. Where it was seen, the Reaver variant of the weapon generally kept the same appearance as the Soul Reaver. Two other Reaver designs are seen in Defiance. A smaller Skull version with a somewhat bloated design is used as a placeholder, while a jagged bright white version devoid of any features, save the black eyes of the Skull, was used for the Toon Mode cheat. Another cheat even allowed players to replace the Reaver with a cardboard tube. The Wraith Blade, as initially seen in Soul Reaver 1, actually reuses the in-game textures for that title, except made partially transparent with a waved and lightning style effect overlaid. When picked up by Razio, the Wraith Blade transitions to a simpler design, with a single core of bright colourful energy extending forward, mixed with undulating waves which wrapped around the central core and coiled up Razio's arm, with the colours corresponding to specific Reavers. Blue for material, green for spectral, and orange for fire. A host of other colours would be added with the other elemental reavers that were cut or seen later. Initially, Soul Reaver 1 had planned for the Wraith Blade to be a glowing phantom version of the physical blade, complete with a hilt which Raziel gripped, as can be seen in early promotional screenshots. However, this was discarded and swapped for a much simpler design prior to the first alphas. Soul Reaver 2 refined the design of the Wraith Blade, making it shorter to match Raziel's stature and making the weapon appear more pointed as well as softening the surrounding energies. Defiance, on the other hand, returned to the original concept of the Wraith Blade, making it once again more accurately resemble the physical weapon, combining the arm coil with the handheld hilt and making the flowing energies match the outline of the physical blade. Raziel's Toon Reaver also mirrored these changes, mixing the Kane Toon Reaver design 
with the flaming and glowing core energy. Along with appearances in other games, the Soul Reaver also had a cameo in Legacy of Cain's spin-off Nosgoth, where it was depicted in a stone relief in the Fane level, held by a cloaked Cain. The Soul Reaver is illustrated in all three of the official comics, but bears little influence on the plot of any of them. When Crystal Dynamics and Silicon Knights first met and discussed collaborating for what would become Blood Omen Legacy of Cain in 1993, the Soul Reaver was one of the concepts that was included in the early ideas. But it wasn't as part of their Pillars of Nosgoth game concepts that became Blood Omen. The Reaver was actually originally from the concepts of the game that went on to become Too Human. With it decided that the name suited the medieval world better, the idea was moved to Legacy of Cain. Dennis Dyack recently confirmed that in its original form, the Soul Reaver was actually a gun. Early developer comments regarding Blood Omen, made before Soul Reaver 2 fully explained the mechanics of time travel in Nosgoth, confirmed that William was indeed holding the Soul Reaver in the battle with Cain, and implied it to be an earlier version of the same blade. Several references to this are made throughout the game, with Nemesis troops wielding similar flamberged swords, and a gigantic colossus at the edge of the land of the Nemesis also wielding a similar weapon. Developer comments and the mechanics of both the Azimuth and William boss fights indicate the Soul Weaver was the intended solution to beat both figures, pleasingly matching up with later lore developments. Although it is technically possible to win both through longer, more drawn-out methods, these were not the canon methods envisaged by developers. The Soul Reaver had another subtle role in Blood Omen, acting as something of a stand-in for Vorador's blade. In that game, Vorador's weapon was created by developers combining the hilt of the cut bone sword with a smaller version of the Soul Reaver blade, leading some to believe that Vorador was using the Soul Reaver, although in contrast to William, this claim was denied by developers. The developers of Defiance ultimately reworked the design of Vorador's blade to make it look more unique, but also explained that Vorador had crafted the blade himself so could likely design similar weapons. In Blood Omen, the Soul Reaver made a very distinctive screaming sound when swung. In later games, the Wraith Blade instead made a more electronic swoosh sound in the material realm, the tone of which varied with the elemental enhancements used. although spectral versions of the blade did retain a similar sigh-like sound effect. In Defiance, the standard spectral and material reavers instead made swooshing sounds. But Raziel's gaining of the spirit reaver once again graduated the sound to make it more reminiscent of the original scream. With a similar sound effect used for the final Soul Weaver handled by Kang. Other versions of the Reaver, such as the Blood Reaver in Soul Reaver 2 and the Soul Reaver in Blood Omen 2, were not given special sound effects. In Alpha versions of Soul Reaver 1, gaining the Wraith Blade automatically gave the ability to fire Reaver bolts along with it. In the retail version, this was only gained when getting the telekinetic force projectile. In early versions, the Wraith Blade also does not have the charged finishing move that appeared in the final game, and instead the player needed the various elemental reavers to perform quick kills with the blade. As these were deleted, the charge move was added in their place. The charged finishing move did initially continue into the development of Soul Reaver 2 but was soon discarded, with enemies no longer requiring such complicated finishing moves. An interesting dynamic of the blade that's not explored in the game is the tendency of its owners towards conquest and despotic tyranny. Cain, William and the Hilden Lord all owned and used the blade for long periods of time, and all attempted to conquer and rule Nosgoth. It's unclear if the presence of the Soul Reaver was any factor in causing these elements, but such tales of cursed and legendary weapons 
are not uncommon in other fictions and myths. The Soul Reaver can be seen in several murals through Soul Reaver 2 and Defiance, which appear to suggest its presence and the presence of the Vampire Champion in the Ancient Wars. Developer comments suggested that these were not intended to be taken literally, but were prophetic images foretelling the Vampire Champion using the Reaver to save them in a more figurative manner, and do not imply that the Reaver or Champion will travel back to visit the ancient times. Many of the Legacy of Cain action figures also feature some variant of the Soul Reaver or Raven. The Soul Reaver has made appearances in several games in the Tomb Raider series, developed by Crystal Dynamics, in a nod to the Legacy of Cain games. Tomb Raider Legend featured the Soul Reaver as an unlockable weapon, fittingly replacing the similarly legendary Excalibur Blade. The skull of the blade could also be seen as a symbol on the snowsuit outfit. The blade could be briefly glimpsed again in Legacy of Cain artwork seen in Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light's Cain and Raziel pack, but did not physically feature in that title. The blade itself could be seen again in Rise of the Tomb Raider, where it could be found after completion of the game, embedded in a wall directly above the fast travel point in the Tomb of the Prophet level. Be sure to subscribe and let us know if you'd like us to cover any specific topics in future Arcane Tomes, and look out for more videos soon. We also have to understand that the blade has three distinct phases to exist. <laughs> A fact which is occasionally used to obscure pot. The history of the blade is inextricably linked with the so oh. <laughs> to before the young boy king William the Just to before to 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 be or not to be why can't I say this <sighs> and kill the young boy king why am I obsessed with young boy kings um <laughs> Like beef. <laughs> well, that's beef. Stop it. Um, some years later, Raziel William, 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 young boy king, Reaver, 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 <laughs> Reaver, 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 bitch. Area Reaver. And mind and dimension with air, air, air. <laughs> In later games, the wraith blade instead made used a. Bleh, Make sound effects. Sound effects? What? Wow. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> I caught myself going. <coughs> its forge was found in the Alphas in the courtyard behind the Dumahim Ass uh, uh, Village. Ass Village? <laughs> Greater even than Cain! <laughs> <laughs> stop it, stop it! <clears throat> Sensible. Its forge was found in the Alphas in the courtyard behind the Doom Him. <laughs> I can't do it. Stop. Stop. Okay. The original plans called for an all encompassing amplified reaver to re. Better. Lastly, the orange fire reaver was gained from the fire forge in Sh in Shige. <laughs> what am I, Sean Connery? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh.